Pratt and here we are in my studio of unfinished things in Woodton in the South Norfolk countryside. Living in Norfolk has an influence on, on the way anyone paints if they if they walk around and look up occasionally because of the very big skies that we get in Norfolk um, which are challenging and uh, and but but a bit interesting and varying um, and I think that has a huge influence it must have a huge influence on you even if you're not doing traditional landscapes you're still surrounded by these uh, big skies if we looked around in here at the unfinished things, there's portraits, landscapes, there's interior landscapes, there's uh, some abstract, surreal kind of work, and um, there are what you might call still lives of, of, of various sorts. Um, but I suppose landscapes, especially in the summer, tend to be quite prevalent because of the, the long days and being able to be outside and observe and want to capture. And one of the things about the sky around here as well is I, I do like blue, um, very fond of blue as a colour, getting different tones of, of blue and um, buying paints from different, uh, different manufacturers and different makers that may be subtly different and obviously mixing my own but um, I think it was a not it was certainly wasn't a conscious thing um, I I think I would struggle to find a painting that doesn't have blue in it in some form either directly or as a very tonal value um, and just looking around at the unfinished things now yes I can there's blue everywhere it's difficult to know where difficult to know where the inspiration comes from for my paintings. I think uh, it can be anything, it could be a, 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 an early morning walk with the dog or looking at an old photograph or a day out and sitting by the sea. I have more than once taken a, taken a photograph of a part of a film that just looked, the framing and everything looked, uh, looked really nice. It might be just an archway with a view. So I will often steal and capture images wherever I can. I've um, got an awful lot of photographs that I look at, far too many. I can't remember the name of the film, um, but it was, a, it was a life story of Picasso, interesting enough. It didn't need to be, it could have been of Mussolini, but it was of Picasso. And um, there was one bit where he was pictured in, a, in, a, in, in an archway, looking out to sea. And it just looked nice, the archway uh, looked at. I do have a, I do, I do like the idea of archways and passages and views that draw you in. And that, 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 that's a fairly old trick. I know I'm not suggesting that's anything new, but I, I am drawn to that idea of, of what's through the archway and, what, and, uh, and what's down the end of that, uh, of that uh, passage. On top, of, on top of that, I think music is, uh, is a very important part of my life generally and particularly music. When I'm in here I tend to listen to music uh, of some sort and I will often pick the music to match the mood I'm in or if, if I'm not picking the mood to match the painting that I'm working on and what I think would be the right music for it. So Bach or Mahler or a soundtrack of a Quentin Tarantino movie would all have different, conjure up a different feeling and a different different levels of intensity when I'm putting a, a brush to a brush to a surface. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But I do tend to always have I have certain go-to music which, if I'm doing something and I want to be a bit calm and I'm just working through something, then uh, um, there are there is music that I will that I will turn to regularly. Um, but I also like to experiment with my mu listening to music as much as with uh, painting. I've, I've never done it yet, but I've always thought I'd like to just try painting something just completely influenced by the music I'm listening to at the time. The physicality of 
a surface and the brush and pigment and the bringing those together there's something about the physicality of it which I find extremely enjoyable and relaxing and almost regardless of the outcome although a nice outcome is always is always preferable but I do find it enjoyable in, in its own right I, I remember years ago when I'd uh, been diagnosed with what was termed a, a life-changing illness um, and it was around about the time that I took up painting again after uh, some years of being absent from it after I left art school and uh, I, I remember having a having a, a, a surface and some paint and some brushes and painting I suddenly realized I've been painting half an hour and the time had gone and I had not thought about the um, overbearing uh, concerns I had at the time about uh, about health they had just gone out of my mind for half an hour um, and I just uh, painted a very rough impression of a, of a pot I've probably still got it here somewhere um, it was nothing special nothing grand but it was it, it was a message it felt like a message at the time and uh, developed on from there and I know over the intervening years I have found that probably painting is one of the few things I can do that will take me away from other things that are uh, going on in, in, in life at the time. It's difficult to know what makes a, what makes a good painting, what the, what the formula is and it's almost the question is almost when is art art and when is it not art and uh, just because you found an object and you call it an object trouvé, does it become art? And in a sense it does, because you're, you are the artist, who, who, who various artists have done that, but they are making people think about the thing in front of them in a different way. So to an extent, art is, is what artists do, is, is one pretty common expression, but I don't think uh, art can be an idea comes from an idea but it has to be content it has to be something tangible um, something mm. you can you can experience as a person it has to be something that other people can experience I think that is probably you know a, a painting has to be experienced and and is not always pleasing to look at because the intention might be that it's very unpleasing to look at and it's jarring and its purpose is to unsettle rather than to nourish and calm. People's uh, relationship to art is, is endlessly fascinating. Um, I know some people will walk into a room and they'll instantly notice objects of art, whatever they are, and other people will be oblivious to them, they've never seen them. Um, I'd like to think I'm in the former group but uh, I know some people who I respect greatly just, just w wouldn't even look at a, see a painting or, a, or, or an object without it being pointed out to them. And then they'd by all means be appreciative and, uh, and uh, interested in it, but they wouldn't necessarily see it first um, immediately. I think uh, more generally, we are at a difficult time for visual art especially and, and audio visual art when it comes to how that finds its place in a digital world um, because there's, ob there's obviously great art being made by, by people who are combining all these things and creating uh, pieces that may become non uh, part of a non-fungible token whatever that is, don't quite understand that um, but equally I think it might actually you know, in a slightly ironic way draw people more and increase people's appreciation more of, of, of two-dimensional art or art in a physical space of its own rather than in a digital space because it sets it apart from the barrage of digital inf and online information that people get whether it's WhatsApp or TikTok or Facebook or Instagram or whatever there's a danger for art to get lost in there despite the fact that it's absolutely integral to it and it's part of it and it and it will always be in there 
and, and so that, that but, but, but there's a danger that um, certain objects will, 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 will get lost whereas in a gallery you have you're, you're giving yourself the luxury of going somewhere and spending time in a space that you've made an effort to go to and to learn and to look and to understand but the way I think another interesting facet of this which ties into the digital and online uh, experiences that people have is that it's clear that art and design and thought, artistic thought, goes into everything that people are experiencing more and more. And to devalue that in a way that certainly the government, uh, our government at the moment, seems to be suggesting by its uh, desire to reduce um, the number of courses in the arts and humanities seems to me to be a very retrograde step and will devalue and diminish society and diminish the nourishment that we get from the world around us. Um, you don't want to go into a gallery and watch an accountant at work or watch accountants at work on TV. You want to watch a, a well-scripted uh, drama and some, some actors performing their... Uh, their, 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 their role and their, and their job very well and someone's gone into the, someone's thought about it all and, and produced something that's worth looking at and something and that takes people um, to be skilled and understand the humanities and not just disciplines of accountancy and science and maths and so on not that I have any problem with accountants particularly in scientists and maths but it's, it's, it's they're not under attack from the government whereas I feel the art, artists and uh, and creative people may be a bit under attack and that's a very bad thing. What I'm planning, what I'm hoping in the near future is to actually finish some of the things in the studio of unfinished things. I'm, that takes quite a bit of discipline and I'm trying to actually uh, discipline myself to, to do that thing, to do those things. It's very rewarding finishing but it can be more, feel a bit more like work than experimentation and, and play but it has to be done it has to be done and, uh, and, I'm, and uh, you know it takes a different kind of focus but I'm hoping to do that and I am exploring uh, some 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 inner latent surrealism which I'm quite interested in trying to uh, explore that idea more in a, in a meaningful way for me now thinking of different ways of representing the the uh, peculiar, unrepresentable or, or incoherent in a coherent, representable way. It's going to be a bit of an interesting uh, experiment, but I'm hoping to do a bit more of that. And this over here, this is not a teapot. <laughs>